Hi friends, I am back with an absolutely amazing dollar a day haul. I have one, two, two bags and like a stack right next to me that I cannot wait to share with you. But first, we have a special guest that wants to say hi super quick. You want to say hi? Mm -mm. No, she just wanted to be on camera for a second, so. <laughs> and show you her little area. Okay, go play. Hi friends, if you're new to the channel, my name is Maria. I'm a part-time reseller, mostly on eBay and Poshmark, but I also sell on Depop and Kitizen. If you have not yet seen my last Dollar Day haul, I will link it up above for you, but oh my gosh, I went to my favorite little honey hole thrift store. So since this thrift store is only open for a few hours, a couple of days of the week, I am normally at work. But if I happen to be off, I will of course stop in to see what I can find. And I was thrilled once again to find they were doing a dollar day sale. Every single piece of clothing in the store, except their formal wear, which I did end up getting a couple things to so stick around to see what was worth me paying up for. Every single thing in the store was a dollar for clothing and I absolutely filled my cart. My one-year-old was with me and the poor little guy, they have like little tiny carts. The poor little guy was in the cart with like this looming mountain of clothes that was working around around him. But he got to have a little bit of fun. It's a very small, intimate store. Um, so we just went over to the toy section while I sorted my cart and he was right next to me playing. So he had quite a bit of fun. He was a trooper. The great thing about the store is guys, I paid a dollar, as I said, which is less than Ben's prices for me. And I got this entire haul in two hours. I got there at nine, I left at 11. This would have taken me hours and hours to, to you know, rummage through at the bins to find this stuff. And instead I went in and found some bangers. So yeah, a lot of the stuff I found was bread and butter. And yeah, I could have come home with three times this amount of other bread and butter stuff if I had wanted to, but I tried to limit it down to some favorites and really hone in on the stuff that's going to make me over $20 profit. There's some stuff that of course is going to be less that you'll see, but it was just stuff I was excited about. So enough talking, let's get into the haul. Okay, the first stack that I have here are all of the pants that I sorted through when I got home. So let's start with those. The first thing here is super interesting. These are Fabletics, but they are like faux leather leggings. I would not have expected these from Fabletics. How cool are these? They are like silky, buttery, smooth, like super great quality, much better than I expected, 100% polyester. And yeah, I really enjoy selling Fabletics. I sold a pair of black Fabletics leggings yesterday actually and well they're they were like sweatpants not leggings and i have a good sell through i don't sell them for a ton i'll probably list these between like 30 and 35 but they absolutely sell for me so if you do see all of the little tags here's their store tags their prices even on non-dollar days are great like these were five dollars usually their clothes are between like three and five dollars sometimes things will be a little bit more marked up from that but even on a normal day really great prices I have slowed down on picking up Lulu's, but with new with tags and only a dollar, um, I, I don't know, I have been selling trouser pants pretty well recently. So I decided to grab these. I normally just grab their dresses, but I don't know, we're gonna try them out. I have sold non dresses from Lulu's. I've sold like a blouse that sold really well, but I've never sold pants, so we'll see. Okay, next, I have never sold Not Your Daughter's Jeans before, but I have always thought about trying it once I could find it at a low price point and maybe a good style, and they had quite a few of them. So I grabbed a couple. Um, there was, I think, another reseller that was here that got there right at nine o'clock when they opened like I did. So I was trying to grab stuff quickly, and I knew I had a small car that had a child on it, so I was trying to be selective also though. But I did end up grabbing two pairs to try out and see what I think. These are a size four, and these are the Billy Mini Boot Cut. They're a nice dark wash. They are in great condition. So yeah, I figured I would try them, see how they do. I always say during my bins hauls that I like trying new brands to me when I'm paying bins prices because if they don't do well, I don't have a lot of you know, investment into them, it's a low risk, and that's absolutely true on a dollar day. So here's the other pair. These are a straight cut from Not Your Daughter's Jeans, also in a size four, but just a nice kind of stretch style. Again, very good condition. I have no idea what I'm gonna list those at yet. I will, of course, take a look at comps and go from there. 
Next we have a nice pair of Eddie Bauer pants. I do like picking up Eddie Bauer when I can get it at a lower price point. These are a size four. But what I really liked about these, A, they're in fantastic condition, but these are adjustable. They like roll up and you can button them. So they're convertible. Um, I will always put convertible, adjustable right in the title. I see that, at least for me, hiking pants, that when you use those keywords, do sell for a little bit more, um, especially if they zip off or something like that. This is definitely styles you'll want to call out. I actually just sold an Eddie Bauer, just like long sleeve thermal today on eBay for like $20. And I've had that one listed for a really long time. So I was very excited to see that one sell. All right, the next two, again, I was very excited to see, and that is because I found some 511 Tactical. Um, these are in a size men's 33 by 30. I always like finding men's pants in 31, 33, 35, 37, just because those odd numbered sizes are much less frequently found. Um, they're not as saturated as like 32, 34, 36. Um, but there's guys out there that need those in between sizes. Um, and these are a nice pair of tactical pants. These are, if you're not familiar with 511 Tactical, they sell very well. They sell on both platforms, but for me, they sell best on eBay and they always sell quickly. They're also, the style number is right in the tag, so it's very easy to look up, you know, the description or look at pictures, you know, that kind of thing. This is another pair from 511. These ones are definitely a little bit older. You can see the different style tag in there. These are uh, 3032, but just a nice cotton, cotton canvas work pant. I think those will both probably sell around 30. All right, again, I could have picked up so many bread and butter things, but I picked two pairs of men's American Eagle jeans just because I don't have any listed right now. They have all sold for me. These are a little bit older. They are a dated um, inner tag, but I don't know. We're going to try them out. These are just a medium wash. They've got some distressing on them straight leg super you know common these are boot cut style so we'll see but again all my men's american eagle has sold off so it's time to get a few more in my closet and then just another kind of straight are these straight these are a low loose which is a little bit in trendy you know y2k right now i think with like loose or baggy styles All right, getting to the end of my pants pile. I don't even know if these are all my pants. It was just the pile that was sitting on top. These are Banana Republic chinos. Again, I've been liking selling kind of more classic career wear. I think a lot of people are going back into the office. These are the Dawson chino in a size 35, 36. Again, there's that odd numbered waist. Banana Republic um, is a good kind of bread and butter mall brand for me. I do like selling it when I can pick it up at these you know, low prices, especially more kind of substantial pieces. All right, I'm seeing one that I'm gonna save for a little bit. If you follow me on Instagram, it's at Life with Marie Nicole. I did give a spoiler for that one, but we'll hold on to that just for a little bit. All right, next are these great pair of Women's Cool in a size 10 regular hiking outdoors pants. These are also in super great condition. Every time I found one of these labels, I was just so excited. I threw it in my cart and I came back to it later to kind of look it over. But I think when I was going through items and sorting my cart, there was only one thing I had to put back. There was actually a pair of Pendleton pants that I think it had a big snag or run or something in it. So I had to put it back, but for the most part, things are in good condition. Of course, there might be something that I've missed that I won't see until I go to photograph and list it, but hopefully not. Hopefully I did a good job sorting. All right, next again, this is a pair of Women's Banana Republic professional trouser pants. I liked the, I don't know, the detailing over here. Just the detailing up there, it looked a little bit unique to me. I don't know if there's a style number in this. These are older, these are from 2011, but they looked like they were in super great condition. And they're like a slightly wider leg on the bottom. And lastly, at least in this first 
stack are these super soft and stretchy pair of Torrid pants in a size 3R. Um, that's a size 3X regular for Torrid. But I will put, you know, pull on waist stretch pants. These are great for loungewear. There's also, you can wear these to the office as black leggings, you know, as a layering piece. There's so much you can do with black leggings. I wear black leggings to the office quite a bit and I dress it up because I do wear mostly career type professional stuff, but I casualize it a little on certain days. Okay, next, I forgot I did get one thing for my daughter who was featured at the beginning of this video, and that's just a pair of these nice snow pants. I'm hoping we get some snow this year so my kids can play in the snow, but these are weatherproof 32 degrees, but for a dollar, they're size seven, eight, which she just turned seven. That's perfect. And since they're gray, I can keep them for my son to wear someday. So great dollar investment. All right, here's some dresses. The next is Lane Bryant. I usually find a lot of like Chico's, Torrid, J. Jill, um, Talbots, things like that at the store. And I didn't find quite as much today. I did find a little bit of Talbots. I found no Chico's. I think that was my only Torrid piece, but I, this might be my only Lane Bryant piece, but this is a size 18, really, really pretty dress. I like this tunic kind of boho style. It's great for fall. This would be so cute layered with like some tights and some tan boots. But you could also wear this with a pair of black heels for the office or something like that. But again, see at normal price, this was $6. I might not have picked up this Lane Bryant at $6. I might have picked it up for two or three, but maybe not six, but at a dollar, yes, please. All right, next is gonna be my first time trying to sell this brand. Oh, this is new with tags. I did not even know that when I bought it. But this is, let me show you the dress first, if I can even get it in frame. This is an absolutely amazing, incredibly soft stretch jersey knit. And look at this pattern. Does this not just wanna make you hop on a plane and go to some sort of Caribbean island? Cause it does for me, I'm like wanting to keep it. <laughs> for next summer. We're hoping to go to Disney next summer, so this would be fun for Florida. But this is a size small, and this is from Soma. And apparently this originally retailed for $90, $89. It is a nice halter, and I'm gonna try this out. I see Soma mostly for intimates and stuff like that, but this has like a built-in shelf bra. Oh, this would be so cute, this would fit me, but especially now that it's new with tags, I'm definitely probably gonna sell it. It's the wrong season, but I do list, people ask me a lot, um, do I list summer clothes in the winter and this and that? I do, I definitely target my sourcing differently in different seasons, but when I'm just finding what I can find, I will absolutely buy out of season items because people live in all climates and people vacation to all climates in every single season. So I did grab that, we're gonna experiment, see how Soma does. So another one that's kind of an intimates line that also makes some dresses is Victoria's Secret. Oh, this one actually, they had marked at $10 probably because they saw the retail price. This one from Victoria's Secret, they originally had it $4.50 just for fun of telling you. But this is a Victoria's Secret size 36B. And it is also a super soft stretch jersey knit, kind of summery dress. It's strapless, it has this built-in bra right there, which is incredibly helpful. But look how pretty that is. I saw that on the rack and I was like, that looks nice. And I do like buying Victoria's Secret. I do like buying Victoria's Secret bras. I don't know if they take bras at this thrift store, actually. I don't think I've ever seen them. Although I do have like an intimate later on, but I don't think I've ever just seen bras. But this, obviously, they took that dress. Another mall brand that I very much do like selling, especially at the right price point and the right items, is J. Crew. So here's the J. Crew label in size four. And if you can see that, this is 100% silk. Um, this tag is most often their kind of like bridal collection. So this was certainly a bridesmaid's dress. It wouldn't have to be though. You could wear this as a wedding guest dress. You could wear this to homecoming or prom or just any sort of special occasion. But 
great material, great style, kind of just a classic style. So I'm gonna need to get that listed. I think homecomings are happening like right now that won't be listed in time for that, but maybe for someone to wear as a bridesmaid. This one I thought was fun. I haven't looked it up. It might be worth $10 or it might be worth $50 for all I know, but it is on a vintage Jansport tag. It is a size small and it is a cropped collegiate sweatshirt. So this is New Mexico State University. It's got their little guy right here. I do like college sports, but I am not familiar with his little name or what their mascot is, but I'll find that out before I list it, of course. But I just thought this kind of cropped sweatshirt is so incredibly in and the fact that it is vintage it's very like 90s y2k plus people that are going off to college next year um people that are currently in college they're always looking for stuff because college gear in like university bookstores or online can be so expensive so going to the secondhand market to buy college gear is kind of a must for a lot of people Okay, who knows what this is? That is the Doctor Who thing. I don't even watch Doctor Who, so I apologize. But <laughs> this is officially licensed BBC Doctor Who gear. Anytime you're listing merch or band tees or something like this, like this isn't officially licensed potentially from New Mexico State. I don't know if somebody just screen printed this onto a Jansport tag, but this was produced by BBC. So this is officially licensed merchandise. I will always put that in the description or the title because some people really are looking for that specifically when they're buying clothes or gears or something like that. There's even a, a drop down in eBay about whether it's officially licensed, especially for sports gear. It's kind of a big deal, but this is a nice full zip jacket. It's got the, dang it, what is that thing called? The Tarvis? So yeah, that's the Tardis. Um, and it's got this on the back, which I'm sure means something to all of the Doctor Who people out there that I don't know what it means. But I actually found a Doctor Who like blazer at this thrift store once. I don't remember if it was dollar a day or not, but I bought it and I think it sold for like $40. So I have luck with Doctor Who stuff apparently at this thrift store. All right, switching gears to a more kind of classic career piece. This is Joseph A. Bank Executive Collection. I don't know if that means much, but it's probably because as you can see, this is 100% cashmere. I could tell when I felt it immediately. I looked this over. It is definitely kind of fuzzy. So I'll run a sweater shaver over it. It's also possibly supposed to be somewhat fuzzy, but I'll depillow it a little bit, but I didn't see any major flaws. I didn't see any holes or anything like that. So that should do very well. Joseph A. Bank can sell, especially in those nicer qualities and materials. I would definitely think that would sell over 30, probably closer to 40. Speaking of nice materials, that is why I grabbed this one. This is Talbot's, definitely an older label, but guys, I have sold that label from Talbot's. So it doesn't seem to hinder the people that are looking for Talbot's. It's also definitely vintage because it's made in Hong Kong. I won't necessarily list it as vintage. I'll probably put that it's vintage, but that's not gonna be like the major selling feature. Like the New Mexico State University, one of the selling features for that will be that it's vintage. This won't really increase the value in my opinion, but this is 100% Egyptian cotton, which is why I picked this up. It's also just a nice classic button front cardigan with these nice ribbed cuffs and a little bit of details and things that make it a little bit more special. So something like that between for Talbots, I'll usually list like 30 to 35 and hope to sell it around 25. All right, this is a great time for fall items, and this is just a quick little North Face vest. I think it's a size small. I'm sorry, did I say North Face? <laughs> you guys are laughing at me. This is Columbia. It would be better if it was North Face, but that's okay. This is a size medium, but I've listed these before, so I can just copy one of those listings and modify it a little bit to these colors and a little bit of the style change, and they'll sell for you know 20 to 25. Definitely for something like this, don't forget the keywords core and granola girl, which is basically, if you're not familiar with all of these cores, is that instead of actually going camping or hiking or fishing or climbing, you just wanna look like you are, but you're going out with your friends or to a festival or something. 
Very strange aesthetic. All right, this is the one item I paid full price for, so we're gonna save that one too. Sorry, you gotta stick around at least for a little bit. Guys, look at this. Look how cool this is. This is a large all over leopard print in a long line, super soft cardigan, so boho. I'm not familiar with this brand. I did look it up. I bought it without looking it up because I was like, I'm, I want this no matter what. Um, it's called Andre the Unit. Andre Andre by Unit. It's a size large. I looked it up and it just looks like a little boutique brand. I don't think the um, tag is much of anything, but this style I think will absolutely sell this. Can you imagine just wearing this cozy at the office? I tried this on just to see if I could get away with it being a large, just, you know, oversized for me to wear to the office at least a couple times. And the, the problem is the sleeves are so long that I wouldn't be able to type or write or do anything that's actually a very important thing to do while at my job. Okay, a couple more men's sh items that I got are some tops. This is one that's not going to sell for a ton, but I decided to grab it because I think it will sell. It's a Baltimore Ravens shirt. I do live just south of Baltimore in Maryland, and it is, again, officially licensed NFL team apparel. So, I don't know. We'll throw that up on eBay for $18, $20 and hope to get around $15 for that. Next is an L.L. Bean traditional fit button-down long sleeve shirt. I have sold the traditional fit style like five or six times by L.L. Bean. I stumbled upon a whole bunch of them at the bins once and just did a quick listing, copied and pasted, changed the, the um, colorway or the pattern. And I think they've all sold. I might have maybe one more, but I thought that, you know, with that, it would be another easy listing to do. I'll just copy those. And I liked that it was this like lightweight denim or chambray. I'll have to look at the fabric content to see. It almost just feels like a lightweight denim. So those all sold between like 18 and 25. I think I listed them at 28. I'm just making this like tower that's eventually gonna fall over. So we'll see how far I make it. All right, next I just have some loose threads to cut. It looks like right here, but that's not too hard. I grabbed this Star Trek shirt and it's by Loot Crate. I've heard that that can be a better kind of t-shirt brand to pick up, but honestly, I haven't looked this one up yet. I thought that the Star Trek itself might sell it. And if the Loot Crate didn't matter and if the Loot Crate just elevates it, then it does. So if you're not already following me, um, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you see my what sold videos and you'll be able to see once I get these listed, what's selling, what's not, what sells fast, what sells high, and what doesn't and what maybe I should have skipped. But we'll see how this does. There's a lot of loyal Trekkies out there that need a new t-shirt. All right, next just basic t-shirt is another 511 tactical shirt. This also says the 511 Fellowship. I don't know if that's anything kind of different, but it's just a large long sleeve shirt. But I think somebody will buy that, maybe $15, $20, most likely again over on eBay. All right, another long sleeve button down. I really liked the pattern. I was a little bit drawn to it, but this is by Gantt. I have sold Gantt once before. I saw it at a Goodwill. Actually, they were selling it for $8 because it was new with tags. And because of that, I decided to look it up and I saw that they can sell pretty well. And it did. It sold for $30, $40 on eBay very quickly. That one was new with tags again, but buying this only for a dollar. This is the Fox Hunt Plaid, which again, I like the style numbers right in that. This is a size medium. Button down shirts are boring. But honestly, I kind of like listing them. I don't know why. I think they're easy. They're easy to list. They're easy to measure because the st there's not that much you have to explain about the style. I can just copy one thing, put it into the other and alter it just a bit. I always will say whether there's a button down collar or not, that is a button down collar. Um, I will say if the cuffs are in any way, you know, special, say the color or the print and call it a day. Okay, I think this is the last button down shirt, but this one was interesting. This is Isaiah Napoli, and the tag looked super nice. There's usually a lot of button down shirts at this store that are Stafford and St. John's Bay and all those types of things. This one just looked super nice. So I decided to look it up. I am extremely glad that I did. 
because this, sorry, I also like this little detail right there on the bottom. Um, there were comps in the hundreds for just a shirt like this. Now, I'm not saying this is going to sell for that. I needed to research things better. But once I started seeing that, I was like, yes, for a dollar, we're going to figure this out at home. Once I list it, we'll do some better research on it. But I want to say that I'm going to comfortably at least get $50 for this conservatively. And I am excited to do some better homework to find out about this brand. So if anybody has heard of this brand or sells this brand or knows anything, let me know down in the comments how did it do or maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing somehow. All right, back to some women's clothes. If I can find the top of this. This is a super slouchy like cardigan sweater wrap thing like you could put it on and then here. What size is this? This is a large from Moth, which is an anthropology brand. And they're very known for like their sweaters. That's the only thing I've ever found by them. But you could wear this and then, oh crap, maybe I'm gonna have to wear this into the office once. And if you wanted to, you could like fold this over like to keep yourself warm or you could just leave it loose. Huh, I might have to wear this. I very, very much like this color. I think that's gonna help it. This color is very in right now. It's like a sage green. I actually just redid my kids' bathroom and it has sage green accents in it. Here is a fun one for sure. This is Jessica McClintock for Gunny Sacks. Now, if you've heard about Gunny Sacks, you probably are picturing the super like prairie dresses that are going to sell for hundreds of dollars. I have not found one of those. It is on my reselling bucket list, but I found this. How cute. Look at the back. The back only gets better. This is so adorable. And especially if you add pinup, rockabilly, those types of things to this dress, I think it's gonna do well. So here's that tag, you can tell it's vintage. It is made in USA, it's got the vintage sizing of a five, six. Maybe I should try this on, I think it would be too big. But like, can you imagine this for, even as like a wedding guest or a party, um, this would be super cute for someone going to like a homecoming or something like that. You could style this up, you could style this down. I love it. Okay, let's do another handful and then I will show you one of my special items before we get all the way to the end. Okay, I told you that I did have some Talbots. Here is, oh no, I showed you one Talbots. Here's another Talbots. If you can see, this is super slinky and it's very Y2K style. It's got the like, just really thin spaghetti straps. I like the print and this is 100% silk which is definitely why I grabbed this. So there's the Talbot's tag, it's a size 12. It was originally only $4. And yes, it's 100% silk. I don't normally market Talbot's as like trendy. It's usually more of like a career pieces, but I will absolutely add in, you know, Y2K and all of those tags into this because I absolutely think it could help elevate that sale. All right, speaking of 100% silk, here is actually, I've got a few items. Um, this is a Tama Bahama size, Tama, Tommy Bahama size small, 100% silk, little tie front sleeveless button down shirt. You could tie that up right there. And this is new with tags, which is super cool. It doesn't have the retail price on it, but it is called the Cayman tie top. It's got the style number. It's got the color, which is tide pool. And it's just absolutely beautiful and brand new. So things like this, I don't know if they're gonna sit around till summer, if somebody will buy them in the meantime, but we will see. I do like finding Tama Bahama in those like really great materials, linen, silk, things like that. Okay, I told you I had another Victoria's Secret like Intimates in here. It is just this little like baby doll type thing. It's like fitted at the top, but then it flares out from there. And this is from their Sexy Little Things line. It is a size 36B. Sorry, they have their tag stuck right on it, but there's that pink tag. It was originally 350. And I didn't see until I got home. It has underwear looped onto it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look these over high and low to see if there's any signs of wear. 
Um, if not, this this seems to me like it might be new without tags. If it is new without tags, I think I can list it with the bottoms because I am claiming that it is new. However, if I see anything, any signs of wear on either of them that I think they are used, I'm just going to textile recycle the little undies and sell the top as it is. Even if you wanted to sell it, keep in mind that that's restricted on all platforms. You cannot sell used underwear, um, at least definitely on eBay, but I'm not really sure you would want to do that anyway, but you can sell new underwear on, on all platforms. Okay, next, I think I mentioned this brand in my last video. I sold it a few times in the past and then I haven't sold it at all recently, but this is Jane and Delancey, which I want to say is sold at Nordstrom and it is a size medium. But it's like this textured, almost seersucker fabric, pinstripe, just a nice kind of slouchy top. I thought this was linen potentially, but it is not. It's rayon and spandex. It's definitely very soft. I liked the mother of pearl buttons. So something like this, I'll probably only list for like 28, but again, at a dollar, that's a really good margin, even if it sells for 20 bucks. I did pick up a couple just basic Columbia shirts that were in fantastic condition that I wanted to try. Again, they're not gonna sell for more than probably $20, but I'm okay with that margin. And I liked the printing on this with these like oversized florals. This is just a size medium. And then here's this other Columbia. There was a lot of Columbia I could have picked up if I wanted to. This one I mainly picked up because it's their OmniWick fabric, which elevates it a little bit. It's advanced evaporation. It helps moisture wick away from you, but it's just this kind of little normal activewear t-shirt, hiking, climbing, running. I will use every single keyword I can think of. This is a size small. <laughs> So I guess I could maybe wear this to the gym once or twice if I want to before I clean it and list it. All right, guys, here is one of my favorite. I haven't decided which one's my favorite. It's this one right now until I can figure the other one out and we'll go from there. But I found these beautiful trouser pants, just a nice classic style in this like gray charcoal print. I saw that this was St. John and I immediately threw it in my cart and then came back to it later. As I was coming back to it later, looked it over, got excited again. This is the newest St. John tag I have ever found. These are a size 10. They did have these listed at $12 initially because these are new with tags. I didn't even know that when I threw them in my cart. I was thrilled when I saw this. And then I flipped them over, ready? $595 retail. So these are the Emma Fit. I have not looked them up yet. They obviously came from Nordstrom initially. I don't know how new of a style these are, or how close it's going to hold that retail value on the resale market. But I want to think I'm definitely going to at least get three digits on these. I don't know how high that's going to go. I will find out. Keep an eye on my what sold videos for when I get these listed because these are these are beautiful. I listed, um, it wasn't one of my bins haul videos recently, a Santana knit skirt. Santana knit is one of their most popular fabrics. It's just the specific knit that they make. I listed that, um, it was just a bit really basic brown pencil skirt. I think I listed it for 55, maybe 60. And I kid you not, within 15 minutes of it being listed, I got an offer for 40 on eBay and I took it because I had gotten at the bins, ran with it, and was thrilled. So something like this, that's, that was also an old like vintage label. Something that's that nice. So excited. All right, back to some normal bread and butter stuff. We are on our last bag, by the way, if you are still hanging in there, thank you. Here is another fantastic find. I did also see that these are new with tags. These are shapewear, if you can see. And these are skims. This is my first time finding skims and to find it new with tags is absolutely thrilling. So here's the other inside tags. It's very hard to see. 
but these are a size medium, just normal pair of shapewear. There is a style number on here, so I'm going to be able hopefully to look them up and I'll get the price. So I have no idea what I'm listing these at, but I've heard really good things about Skims forever, so we will see if that holds true. Next, another just basic bread and butter. This is another LL Bean shirt. This absolutely needs steamed, but it is size medium, 100% linen, like seafoam blue, just button down shirt. Again, I said it earlier, I like selling LL Bean and I normally pick up like anything 100% linen and especially when it's kind of a trusted brand like LL Bean, that makes me excited. All right, another Talbot's piece. This is a size four petite. This is a slightly older label, but this is a silk blend, just nice kind of blouse. I'm going to try this on. It might be a little bit big, but I'm hoping to wear this into the office once or twice before I sell it. All right, here's another sports apparel. This is college football, Penn State, Nittany Lions. What's it say on the? It says Nittany Lions right there on the tag. This is from Coliseum. So another officially licensed shirt, just a Henley Raglan little tee. That'll probably sell, you know, maybe for 15 over on eBay. Another summary item. This is something I would only get at a dollar day or a bin. Same with that last one. I would not pick that up for probably anything much more than a dollar. This is just a smocked little crop top. So very in style. Yes, it's the wrong season. We'll see how it does this fall and winter. But this is by Angie, which is a very like boho boutique brand. It's a size large. I'll probably sell that for maybe 15 to 18, maybe up to 20. All right, we're getting to the end of our last few dollar items, and then I'm gonna show you, I do have a few accessories and shoes and belts and stuff that I will get to in just a minute. All right, this one, you guys gotta let me know down in the comments what you think this is. This is Zara, and it's the newer label Zara in a size medium. I believe this might be new without tags. It's still got the manufacturer hang tag on it there. I keep going back and forth between whether this is a crop top that you wear here or whether this is a skirt. It is smocked and flouncy. I'm gonna try it on. I actually haven't tried it on both locations to see and that might give it away. I can also hopefully look up the stock number um, if you're not familiar because these Zara tags, I heard somebody say recently they're like CVS tags. They just go on, or CVS um, receipts. They just go on and on and on. But if you find, see if it's not gonna wash it out. If you find these numbers right here, there's four numbers, three numbers, and then three more numbers. The first seven, so the set of four and the second set of three, is the style number. Sometimes that works for me and it brings it up and then other times it doesn't. So I, I don't know why. <laughs> Zara, as we all know, is extremely fast fashion. So they're spitting out new designs and clothes constantly. So being able to find model photos, finding the style numbers is definitely pretty tricky. Oh my gosh, I forgot about these. These were a great find. These are just a classic pair of shorts, but I liked the rolled bottom hem. These are from Babaton. This is Babaton tailored. It's probably just, you know, adding a little thing there. They are a size double zero, but Babaton is an Aritzia brand, and it is one of their nicer Aritzia brands. I have only found it twice. One of them is a dress that is still needs to be listed at a Goodwill. And the other was just this little like teeny tiny crop top bra top bralette thing and it sold fast for like $40. So I haven't looked these up yet, but I have high hopes. Next, if you follow my channel, you know I love me some Piranha. It always sells great for me. This is a size medium. It's just a really basic tank, so it's not gonna be you know a spectacular seller, but I still think I'll be able to sell this for $20, definitely between 15 and maybe up to 25. There's the Piranha label on the back as well. This feels like some sort of all natural materials. Probably cotton, but maybe it's some linen. Oh, cool. This is, sorry, the, the tag is all scrunched. This is 75% organic cotton and 25% hemp. So that does elevate it, so I might be able to get up to that 20 to 25 maybe purchase price. 
Next, I forgot I had another 100% linen item. This is just, it says Chelsea Campbell for Charter Club. I don't know if I've ever picked up Charter Club before, but for 100% silk, for $1, I definitely will. It is just a button down tank top, great for summer, great to tuck in. This is a great one of those like quiet luxury type items, great materials, solid color, things like that. It's also small. So speaking of, I might be able to style that into the workplace to wear to work once also. It's great having kind of just a constant. So I've been in my new job for three weeks now and I haven't worn the same thing yet because I'm just constantly wearing clothes that I've been cleaning and listing. And I don't know if that'll always be true. I obviously have some basics that I'm mixing and matching, but at least one item in my outfit every day has been new and it's just fun. All right. This is Ex Officio. I have heard people selling this on eBay. It's not a fantastic seller, but I've heard that it's a solid seller. I've seen it at the Goodwills, but I haven't wanted to pay Goodwill prices. So I decided that for a dollar would be a great time to try it out. It's just a little women's medium shirt. It's definitely an outdoorsy type brand. All right, let's go through my accessories and then I will show you the formal piece that I did pick up at full price. I found two belts and belts at the store every day of the week are only $1. So the first is just this nice Columbia belt. And it actually, I figured it was leather. It is not leather, it is a PU leather, so a faux leather. But it's super nice. It's got their like screen printing on the inside. This is a size medium, 34, 36. So I decided to pick it up anyway. Columbia is, you know, a reputable brand. So I think I could probably sell this for $20. The next one is fun. I haven't looked this up at all, but this is an incredibly durable Ford trucks, definitely leather belt. It's got this embossing with their logo all over. I think this could do really well, especially on eBay. Truck guys really <laughs> like their trucks, so I think there's a, a Ford guy out there that's absolutely gonna want this. All right, a couple pairs of shoes. First are these Steve Madden. This goes here, so your ankle goes through that. It just looks funny because they sit like that. At first I thought it was broken, then I realized that you have to stick your ankle through it and then your ankle will hold it there. Um, but these were only $3.50. That is their normal price. They are a 5.5, so they are a little bit small. But I loved the style. I was hoping they were my size and I was going to wear them into the workplace, but they are not. Super great condition. These are also a faux leather, so I will, of course, say that in the listing. Next, I loved the style of these. They look very like academia, preppy, academic. I will add all of those things. But these are actually a Clark's. They're a genuine suede leather, a great style. They were only $5. They've got the Clark's collection soft cushion right there. And I do like selling Clark's. I think I said in my last What Sold video when I had a Clark's to sell that they do tend to sit for a little bit, but they do always sell. And the boots, booties in my experience have always sold a little better. And this is absolutely the right season for something like this. All right, next are these super cute knee high boots. I loved this manufactured all over distressing, very Western, very boho. And these are a six and a half. These fit me wonderfully. Um, we might be going apple picking. We've been trying to go apple picking and it keeps raining. Um, so if it's not raining and it's not muddy, I might wear these because I think they'd be cute. But these, you're probably not going to be able to see this, but you know what it looks like. These are Steve Madden. The only issue with these is normally you can find the style number and the material in all Steve Madden shoes. And I need to get a flashlight out because I haven't been able to find them yet. But I thought the style alone would be able to sell these for sure. I'll be able to stuff them and take nice pictures. But they were not marked. Um, so I wasn't sure how much they were gonna sell them for. I took them up with everything else and asked her. She said, how about $5? And I said, that sounds perfect. 
All right, my last item, which I did pay up a little bit for, but how I'm gonna do my cost of goods for everything was everything that I bought for a dollar, I'll put in my inventory as a $1 purchase. And then all of these other, the belts and the shoes in this bag, I will just average together. So this won't be quite as high, but I think it would have been worth it anyway, because look how cute this bag is. Look at that embroidery. You'll be able to tell what this is right away, but this is a very nice fossil bag. And I boho just never goes out of style. People love it. Um, it's shoulder bag, crossbody, and even inside. Usually it's kind of beat up, or there's you know tears or rips or snags. This doesn't have any of that. I might have to like vacuum out like a couple crumbs here or there, but I think this will do well. I think this should sell between like 30 and 50. So for nine dollars, thought it was worth it. It's got a magnetic closure right there. Very nice. Who knows? I might even use this maybe for a little bit before I sell it because it's a beautiful bag. Okay, the next thing and the last thing that I got is very exciting. So in this sale, the only thing I think I mentioned um, that was not included in the dollar sale was anything marked as formal wear, which I understood in the women's clothes because they had all the like formal dresses hanging off to the side and it has a big sign. So that I knew. However, there was, I think, a Calvin Klein like jumpsuit mixed into the dresses that I picked up, I was excited. I think it might've even been new with tags. And when I got to the register, she said, this isn't part of the dollar, do you want it or not? Um, because I didn't realize that these little tags, where'd they go? These colors of the stripe mean something. It tells them what category it's in. So she, the, the stripe on the formal wear looked different. And I decided not to get that one. And then I had a Zara three piece, suit, blazer, pants, or um, sorry, three-piece suit, yes, vest, blazer, and pants. I think it was marked at $25. I probably still could have done really well on it. Honestly, my son was ready to leave. I had piles of clothes everywhere and was just trying to get to check out. I looked like a crazy person. So I decided to leave that behind. And initially, once I found out formal wear, I also had this two-piece suit set. I said, no, thank you, I won't take it. And then I was like, Maria, what are you doing? Go, go back and get that one. This was $12 for a two-piece suit, and I do have every reason thus far to think it's authentic, but I will continue to check and do my due diligence. This, let me see the best tag to show you, because it's gonna be difficult. This is Versace Collection. This is a beautiful navy blue men's suit. Here's the blazer. You can see on this inner lining that it's got Versace collection all over it. And then here's the best tag right there. So I did just look this up briefly when I got home. I looked it over in the store just to make sure there weren't any major red flags of something being counterfeit. The stitching is impeccable. The materials are beautiful. It's not ripping. Um, the tags look right when I was looking at comps. So there were no major red flags. I will of course either have it authenticated or be you know, very sure that it's authentic before I list it. But for $12, I was like, why would I not buy a Versace suit for $12? So I ran back over to where she said it and was like, yes, I'll take this at the full price, please. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna be listing this at quite yet. Here's the buttons, they also say Versace. Um, but I definitely in the three digits, I saw suits selling for like 75 and I saw suits selling for like 500. So I don't know. I definitely have to do some research. It might be something that I often do where I kind of list high, see what kind of interest I get for the first few weeks or months. And then, you know, I'll adjust it from there if I need to. I also don't have a mannequin, which will make taking pictures of a two piece suit a little harder, but I'm sure I will figure something out. All right, that is my entire haul. I am about almost at an hour, so I hope you guys have been listing or sourcing or photographing or doing something. If you're not a reseller and you just enjoy hanging out with me, thank you so much. I know I enjoyed watching people do this before I was a reseller, so be careful. It's a slippery slope, <laughs> but that's okay. Come join the family, be a reseller. The more the merrier, in my opinion. As I mentioned earlier, don't forget that subscribe button. I've got lots of more fun content coming. Give this video a big thumbs up if you're able to stick with me the whole way through and I'll see you next time.
拜。